In a digital age where connections are formed through screens, some lines can blur, leading to an obsession that transcends admiration and veers into the realm of intrusion. We're about to explore a game that will make you rethink the nature of online interactions and the dark corners they can lead to. Brace yourselves for a journey into the eerie and unsettling tale of a parasocial relationship gone horribly wrong. Our story begins with Nina. She's a full-time streamer in Japan. Her best friend, Asuka, always makes sure she takes care of herself. Asuka sends Nina a text and reminds her to eat the leftover Nikujaga she made. While she has her phone out, she peers through her text messages, revealing a mother who thinks being a streamer is silly and an ex-boyfriend who has been blocked. Asuka warms up food and takes a few moments to eat. Now, feeling refreshed and awake, Nina sits down on her PC, turns on her VTuber app, and goes live as Sinra Nina, her streamer alias. Nina plays a game called Akamanto that has no saves and proves overly difficult. After losing the game, Nina's chat is supportive, but suggests maybe a different game. A chatter by the name of I Love Nina offers an alternate game and drops a link to a website and chat. The link reveals a download page for a game that says, Horror Game Only for Sinra Nina. Nina downloads the game, then fires it up. The game is a simple puzzle game. With the help of chat, Nina managed to complete the game and chat erupts in excitement. Many people start referring to her face. What do you mean face? Nina asks in confusion. Nina glances over to her left. Her VTuber application had failed, revealing her face and identity to everyone watching. Nina ends the stream and receives a text message from an unknown number. Keep streaming the game I send. Otherwise, bad things will happen, reads the message. Nina immediately blocks the number. The doorbell rings a few moments later. Nina peeks through the peephole to see that no one is there, just to slip a paper in the mail slot that reads, I am always watching over you. Nina is awakened by her phone alarm. She lifts her heads up. She had fallen asleep at her desk while her PC ran a threat scan. Nina looks at the screen. No current threats, it reads. Nina glances at her phone. Trash pickup day notification shows up. While grabbing all the trash from her apartment, she receives another text from another unknown number. There's no use blocking me. Just listen to what I say. It reads ominously. Nina grabs the rest of the trash and heads outside. The walk outside is nice. The air is warm and crisp. Her ears are filled with songs from birds. She has a great view of the city where she is. Outside, Nina notices a police officer grabbing trash from the bushes. The police officer says hello to Nina and informs her, I'm just volunteering. The police station is nearby, so I'm just keeping busy. The police officer is friendly, but he asks her, Do you live alone? Nina, feeling uncomfortable at the question, just says no. The police officer looks at her oddly. Well, just be careful. Anything could happen to a young lady like you, he says. Just come to the police station if you need any help. As Nina arrives to the apartment building's dumpster, she notices a strange guy just standing there. He stares off into space as if no thought is in his head. Nina drops her trash and walks away. Nina glances back at the man and notices he puts his trash in and grabs a different bag of trash, her trash, and scurries behind the building. Nina looks for the police officer she returns back to the building entrance to tell her about the trash theft, but he has, unfortunately, moved on somewhere else. Nina had previously reached out to Asuka about the VTuber incident. Asuka offers to hang out and catch up. Asuka arrives and they go to a coffee shop. They arrive at Chilla's Coffee, grab coffee and snacks, and sit down for a chat. Nina recants the story to Asuka. Asuka scolds Nina for opening random files like that. They may be your fans, but you don't know who they are at the end of the day, she warns. Nina zones out while talking to Asuka. Out of the corner of her eye, she notices a man in a hood staring at her while waiting for his order. She shuffles in her seat a bit. He stares the entire time and eventually settles into a seat at the table directly beside them. While conversing, Nina notices that he's watching a video on his phone that looks exactly like her VTuber. Asuka and Nina chat for a bit longer and the creepy man stands up. He stands behind Asuka and stares at Nina again, glancing at his phone and then her. Nina tries to point him out to Asuka, but he immediately walks away before she can turn to see him. Asuka walks Nina home and sees her inside the security door of her entrance. Asuka leaves and Nina checks her phone while waiting for the elevator. The elevator arrives, Nina boards it, and the creepy man from the coffee shop gets on the elevator. Nina's heart pounds. She can feel the pressure of her blood in her ears and eyes. He says nothing and just stares forward. The elevator ride only takes a few seconds, but it feels like hours. Nina feels anxiety over her entire body, pins and needles poking her from the inside. The elevator arrives to her floor. She doesn't want this man to know it's her floor, but she had already pushed the button, and exiting sounds like a much better idea than riding the elevator longer. She power walks with great fervor away from the elevator. The doors close and take the man somewhere else. He knows what floor I live on now, Nina thinks, feeling herself on the brink of a panic attack. She rushes into her apartment and immediately locks everything. Nina is at home for long before it's time to stream again. 
She sits down at her PC, double checks her VTuber app. It's functioning correctly. She lets it run for a few minutes to make sure. She eventually goes live and begrudgingly fires up the game the chatter had sent yesterday. The game is simple and Nina progresses through it. Her eye catches a message from I love Nina. I go to chill his coffee too. Nina swallows. She ignores it and hopes no one in chat picks up on it. Are this person and the creepy guy from the coffee shop the same? Nina finishes the game and completes her stream without anything else really happening. Nina is tired from the past couple of days. She decides on a bath before bed. She checks the door of one of the rooms of her apartment to get something and notices the door is jammed. It's too late to deal with this, she thinks to herself. I'll look at it tomorrow. Nina gets undressed and relaxes in her bath. The hot water soothes her skin and she can almost feel the tension and stress in her body evaporate away as she closes her eyes. She could just sit here forever. Her peace is interrupted. She hears a creaking as she looks up and notices in the mirror that the bathroom door is opened. There's a beeping sound followed by nothing. Nina is no longer safe. She feels the opposite. The water holds her hostage as she feels vulnerable. The hot water forcing fear back into her body. She sits completely still, not daring to make a sound. After what feels like eternity and hearing no new noise, she eventually builds the resolve to move. She exits the bath, wraps a towel around herself, and steps out. The washer dryer is turned on. Nina turns it off and quietly sobs to herself. Nina wakes up. Was yesterday real? No one could have been in her apartment yesterday, right? Was it a paranormal event? I should ask someone about this, she ponders to herself. Nina gets out of bed and notices mail in her mail slot. It's a single flyer from her building, Chilla's residence. I'm Miyamoto, it reads, the manager of the building. Please get in touch with me anytime if there are problems. Considering it better to at least inquire, Nina decides to call the building manager. The building manager is polite and asks for Nina's room number and confirms that nothing strange has happened in that apartment before, leading that a paranormal event is unlikely. Miyamoto also tells Nina, if you happen to find yourself in any trouble, say for example, dealing with a stalker, be sure to reach out to me. Nina goes live again. Her schedule is to go live every day. I guess that's the life of a full-time streamer. She continues the game that was sent to her by the creepy stalker. While playing the game, I love Nina types. Did you enjoy your bath yesterday? Nina tries to concentrate, but the comment sparks thoughts in the back of her brain. Was someone in this apartment last night? She panics to herself. Nina progresses through the game, dealing with the objectives. <laughs> Nina jumps. The TV in her apartment had turned on by itself. The TV turns off on its own. A few moments later, Nina manages to finish the game and ends the stream. In all the chaos of the day, Nina had forgotten to eat and starts to feel groggy from the lack of sustenance. Of course, she hadn't been grocery shopping since last week and has nothing to work with. She finds the TV remote on the floor by the fridge while looking for food. That's odd. I always keep this on the coffee table, she says to herself. She ponders, I could order delivery or I could walk to the convenience store. I don't know why going out at night would even be a good option here. Against her better judgment, she decides to go to the convenience store. She slips her shoes on and heads out. On her floor, peering off the balcony is a lady in a hat, smoking a cigarette. Nina walks by and tries to discreetly hold her breath as not to breathe in any secondhand smoke. The manager calls out, you're Miss Nina, correct? Nina freezes, but is relieved when she speaks. I'm Miyamoto, the building manager. Do you live alone? Miyamoto inquires. Before Nina can answer, Miyamoto continues. It's so dangerous for a girl to live alone. What about a boyfriend? Nina is reeling inside from the questions, but decides to stay polite. Not at the moment, she offers hesitantly. Moment? So was it recent? Why did you break up? Miyamoto doesn't stop. She's like a car barreling down a racetrack against the awkwardness of this entire conversation. Was there that bad of a reason? Miyamoto catches Nina's eyes and pauses for a moment. Ah, pardon me. I'm being too nosy, aren't I? She offers to hear Nina out if anything happens and returns to viewing the city under the smoke of her cigarette. Nina continues out of the building and heads down the sidewalk in the dark. In normal circumstances, the sounds of a busy night city, the bugs chirping in the surroundings, would be quite peaceful. Instead, with everything that's been going on, Nina's thoughts are interrupted by an SUV that almost slams into her in the crosswalk. Nina swallows her anger and crosses without looking back. I just need to get snacks and go home. She resolves herself. She looks around in the store for a bit. Nina Impulse grabs a lot of items and fills a shopping basket with snacks and drinks. While waiting in line to check out, Nina notices something outside. A man in a black jacket with his hood up. It's the same guy she saw in the coffee shop in the elevator. Had he just been sitting near her building to see if she ever leaves? Nina stands in line, her feet tapping the floor, her hands clammy with sweat. Her skin texturizes with goosebumps. What do I do? She thinks to herself, on the verge of tears. As her turn comes up, Nina notices the second person with a hood on, this one with a white coat, inside the store. Nina checks out at the counter, looks outside and notices the stalker is gone. Maybe I can get home without issue. 
she encourages herself. Right as she approaches the exit, the white coat person rushes up to her. Nina can see it's Ricky, uh, her ex-boyfriend. I figured you blocked me, but I had to talk to you, he exclaims. Leave me alone, Nina screams at him. Hear me out. Your friend is acting suspicious. I have evidence. He is cut off. What are you doing? Shouts the store clerk. Nina backs away as the clerk inserts himself between the two. As she leaves, Ricky yells for her. Send me a message. Nina rushes outside, overwhelmed with everything. As she passes the crosswalk, she hears something behind her. She turns, only to see the stalker again. She walks home, walking fast, but not trying to make it obvious that she knows he's there. She peers over her shoulder occasionally, the stalker still tailing. She waits until she's close to her apartment building and then speeds up, putting enough distance between her and him so she can get inside. Nina, in a panic, presses the elevator button. It doesn't come fast enough, and she presses the button a few more times, and it finally arrives. She rides the elevator. The elevator stops on the second floor, and the hooded figure is there waiting. He boards the elevator, says nothing, and just looks forward. He must have gotten in the back and ran up the fire escape stairs. The elevator arrives on her floor, and she gets out. He already knows she lives on this floor, so there's really no sense in hiding that now. As she walks down the path to her door, she turns. The man had gotten off the elevator this time, watching Nina. She has no choice but to go inside her apartment, revealing the apartment number. It's better than risking outside where he can get to her easily. She rushes in and slams the door with the lock. Nina seeks out Asuka's guidance. Asuka tells Nina, the police may not do anything with no evidence, and it may provoke the guy. Maybe wait until the morning and go seek a consultation from the police? Nina agrees and thinks back to what Ricky has said in the store. He said he had evidence about her friend. Did he mean Asuka? She decides to unblock Rikia. She can always reblock him later if he seems absurd. She inquires about his comments. The two discuss events over a lengthy text message conversation. Rikia sends Nina a picture of Asuka. In the picture, Asuka's talking to someone, a man in a black jacket with his hood up. Asuka's behind this? She whispers to herself, blinking away tears. I have to block her. Nina sits for a moment to just breathe. She allows her brain to just process for a minute to move information around so that she can focus in a rational manner. A buzzing sound is heard from the PC. Nina gets up and looks at her PC to see her VTuber on the screen animating itself forever alone. It mumbles as it walks off screen and the PC shuts itself down. What the? Nina stares in disbelief. Nina hears a tapping sound from the other side of their apartment. Glass tapping. Is someone at the window? Nina goes to her storage room, the room by the door with the window. She peeks through the curtain only to see the stalker. He walks away and Nina flings the curtains closed, her heart in her throat. She stands in her hallway, her arms wrapped around herself. She suddenly hears a click and sees the stalker open her private balcony door. In the dark, he doesn't see her in the hallway, but he walks in, looking around. Nina's phone buzzes in her pocket. She glances at it and her stream's chat is on the screen, guiding her. Nina hides in the closet of the hallway. The stalker wanders around, looking for her. She finds a screwdriver in the closet and grips it, the texture of the handle boring into her skin. She waits until he turns his back towards her, and she rushes him, stabbing him in the back with a screwdriver, screaming in fear. He falls forward, hunched, groaning. Nina runs to the front door. Nina runs to the main door, opens it, only for Asuka to come around the corner. She smiles and Nina feels like she's been punched in the stomach. She looks down and sees a blade in her abdomen, Asuka's hand around the hilt. Nina collapses backwards and gasps as she wakes up on the couch. A dream, just a dream. Nina looks at the clock. She slept all the way until 4 p.m. She still needed to see the police. With what little daylight remains, Nina rushes down to the police station. When she arrives, the police officer she ran into before is outside the building. He offers to hear her out but insists they go somewhere less intimidating than the police box to chat. This is odd to Nina, but she complies. They sit on a bench in a nearby park, and Nina catches up the officer on everything that has happened. He gives her his phone number and tells her if anything happens to contact him directly, as he stays nearby and can arrive faster than the dispatch system sending the police. Nina arrives back home and thinks for a moment. She needs to stream because her entire income and livelihood comes from it. However, she's scared. Should she call Asuka anyway? She unblocks Asuka and is upfront with her. I blocked you because I don't know who to trust anymore. I'm sorry. Asuka is very forgiving and understanding and arrives quickly to be at Nina's aid. Nina shows Asuka the picture Ricky has sent. Asuka goes on to tell Nina that she was walking home and that the man called out to her. He then refused to say anything else after calling her and just stared at her as if his brain had frozen. So Ricky had judged the situation wrong? She said aloud. Asuka offers to hang out on the couch while Nina streams. Nina settles in and goes live. Nina notices the stalker's game takes place near the convenience store where she had went before. The game progresses down the same path they had walked. 
A few minutes into the stream, Asuka tells Nina she's hungry, but her fridge is empty. Asuka wants to run down to the convenience store. Nina squirms in her chair a little. You're supposed to stay here. Asuka assures her that she will be back very quickly and that everything will be okay. Nina tries to stomach her panic and play the game so as not to upset the stalker. Nina progresses the game and it walks all the way from the store, back to her building, up the elevator, down the walkway, and into her apartment. The camera moves in and looks at her. Nina glances over her shoulder. She thought she saw something around the corner, but it was gone. Nina can taste bile in her mouth. I feel a bit sick, so I'm going to end a little early, she declares to her chat and ends the stream. Suddenly, a video file auto-opens on her PC. It's a recording of her at the computer. It then cuts to a video of her in the bath and then to her asleep in her bed. Nina stands up fast and backs away from her desk. I have to call someone. He comes to my apartment. Nina grabs her phone and thinks for a moment. Who to call? Nina decides to call the police officer. He claimed he could get there fast after all. The police officer answers and declares, I'll be right there. Moments later, Nina's phone erupts in text messages. It's the unknown number. The messages are intense. We can meet today. I'm heading over now, so be ready. Nina hears her front door unlocking. He had all those videos of her, so of course he has a way to get in. She rushes to the closet behind her PC and hides inside. She grabs her phone to check on help, but the battery has died. She can hear the stalker in her apartment. He's looking for her, checking doors, checking rooms, making his way further inside. He eventually gets close to the closet. Tears run down Nina's face as she holds her breath to avoid making any sound. The stalker finds her and yanks her from the closet. The next few moments happen in a blur. Ricky appears behind the stalker with the police officer, swings at him. The stalker wastes no time and runs away. The police chase after him and Ricky tends to Nina. The police concluded the stalker had been watching Sandra and Nina and had developed a parasocial relationship in his mind of them together. Nina bonded with Ricky over the incident and they got back together. In the near future, while at a coffee shop, Asuka approaches Nina. She asks to show Nina something. It's a picture of Ricky. He's handing a large envelope to someone in a black jacket with their hood up. Nina realizing the truth to her situation and everything that happened. If only I had believed in Asuka. Okay, that's uh, not a great ending, so let's see if we can do better. Nina decides to call Asuka. Asuka had been her best friend forever. She could trust her. Nina calls and hears Asuka's phone ringing from outside the window. It's coming from the balcony, Nina whispers to herself. Nina goes out her private balcony door and hears the phone to the next door balcony. There's a small doorway she squeezes through and finds Asuka's phone on the ground. Why would Asuka's phone be here? Nina looks around and notices the door to the apartment next door is open. Asuka's phone was out here on the balcony and not sure what it means. She enters the neighbor's apartment for answers. Nina notices the video she just saw on her computer playing on the computer in this apartment. There's also a cork board with photos of her at the store out and about and just sitting around. Nina's mouth is hot from the pits of her stomach. Nina's thoughts are interrupted by shuffling in the room beside her. She peeks in the bathroom to find Asuka tied up in the bathtub. Asuka groggily wakes up from being knocked out. Nina, she mumbles, you have to get help. Nina tries to help Asuka, but the motion is interrupted by keys jingling in the door. Go, get help. They want you, not me, Asuka exclaims. Nina doesn't want to leave her friend, but she's right. Nina sneaks back out on the balcony door before the person comes inside. Nina quietly slips inside her own apartment and notices the stalker in her stream room looking around for her. She quietly slips past him and carefully walks out her main door. As soon as she's outside, she sprints for the elevator. As the elevator arrives, the stalker sprints after her, fade on her side. The elevator arrives quickly and she makes it aboard before he can reach her. Nina arrives in the lobby to find Miyamoto. Miyamoto warns her it's not safe at night and offers to escort her back to her room. Nina ignores her, a knot in her stomach urging her away. She walks outside, the police officer is also there waiting for her. Did something happen? He calls out. It's dangerous at night for a lady. This, his assumptions about her situation tightens the knot in her stomach. She ignores him and runs away. He immediately rushes after her. Nina runs with adrenaline pumping into her legs, pushing her faster than she could ever go on her own. She rushes for the police box and finds an off. The local news is on. The police hold a press conference. Four suspects were arrested on breaking and entering, kidnapping and stalking. Ricky, uh, the mastermind behind the whole plot, his mother, Miyamoto, his uncle, Shirota, pretending to be a police officer, and Akushu, whom Rikia hired to be the stalker. They were all in on it. The entire thing was put together by Rikia. All four pled guilty to the crimes. Nina and Asuka enjoy lunch together. Nina decides it's time to move to a new apartment and make new memories. With a friend like Asuka, 
Nina feels safer than ever. That's the story of Parasocial. Thanks for watching.